This question comes to us from Jay Look. How do you ramp up your intensity in matches? I'm too passive and calm during points, uh, sorry, point to point of not having any urgency. Also, I cannot mentally get myself to play to win and thus take weapons off the table. All I do is play to keep the point going by hitting at the opponent and hope for an opponent to hit the net or out of bounds. Okay, so we're gonna talk about all those those little individual pieces. So I'd like, I like to look at intensity as kind of a spectrum. And you might be anywhere on this spectrum. And I'll, I'll tell you kind of where I am just as an example. I think I'm in, on the opposite end of the spectrum as you. On one end, there's like bouncing up and down, like heart rate, like super high. Adrenaline is kind of taking over the system. This is like far end of, of the spectrum, like overly activated, like overly intense and just kind of really high energy. And as a result, you kind of tend to overhit everything, kind of spray the ball. This is what tends to happen to me. If you go back over the last year, year and a half and watch my matches, I tend to start off matches like really super hyped up and over activated. My adrenaline's way too high. I'm swinging way too intensely. I'm spraying the ball all over the place. And it takes me a couple of games to like calm down when I, when I don't do a good job of it. Now, on the other end of the spectrum is kind of, it sounds like what you described, low energy, almost kind of like bored, low intensity movement, being careful, kind of tentative swings and, and, just, and just being careful hitting the ball back. Both of those extremes are not good for performance. And I'm going to share with you exactly how you can kind of get yourself out of that, that rut. So if you tend to be low energy starting a match, then definitely check out this lesson. You want to activate yourself mentally, physically, and in terms of tactics. And I just recently posted uh, this video. It's called How to Start a Tennis Match Strong. And that's the thumbnail you wanna you wanna look for when you type that into YouTube. So I, I'm not gonna repeat all that, but go check out that lesson, and it'll show you like step by step how to do mental preparation, physical preparation, tactical preparation, so you begin the match much higher like activation and intensity than it sounds like you currently are. So that's that's step number one. Now in terms of like your tactics you say that I, you're just kind of hitting the ball back, like waiting them for them to make a mistake. Now, I just wanna be really clear up front, like that's really smart. Most tennis points end with somebody making a mistake or making an error of some kind. So especially from beginner to intermediate levels of play, you'll win a ton of matches just getting the ball back and just being like, here you go. Like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? And just using your patience and using your calmness and waiting for an, for an error from your opponent at first is gonna to lead to a ton of wins on the tennis court. But eventually, you do need confident swings to beat better opponents. As the competition gets better and better, and your opponents have more and more weapons at their disposal, then they'll be able to take your safe shots and easily start to put them away. If you're not at that level yet, then totally don't worry about it. You don't need to beat yourself up over the fact that you're playing smart, consistent tennis. That's totally fine. But eventually, you will need to develop swing speed and offense and weapons. And uh, in my book called Essential Tennis, really creative title, there's a chapter, chapter 22, and I'll tell you the drill that's in the, the book. Uh, the, that, the name of that chapter is the Great Swing Speed Conundrum, and it talks about how players tend to decelerate and swing slowly in matches. And so here's the, the drill in that chapter of my book that I highly recommend you go out and train and do, and do this on a regular basis. So first, just kind of generally warm up. If, if you can get a ball machine, that would be fantastic, or you can just drop the ball to yourself. You, you don't even need a hitting partner. Um, you could pay for a lesson with a coach and do this with a coach, or you could do it with a ball machine, or you can drop the ball to yourself. So just get a general warm up and get a nice, comfortable, easy, like five out of 10 swing for you. Five out of 10 means it's halfway up the power scale. So if 10 out of 10 is as fast as you can physically swing the racket, and one out of 10 is as slow as you can physically move your body and still hit the ball, Five out of 10 is halfway up that scale. So start off at five out of 10 and then spend like 30 seconds or 45 seconds making your way up the spectrum. So begin at four out of 10. So drop down a little bit less than half speed and for like 30 or 45 seconds or so, 
just hit four hands at that speed and just kind of take some mental notes. Then spend 30 or 45 seconds hitting four hands at a six out of 10 speed, then at, a, at an eight out of 10 speed, and then finally a 10 out of 10 speed. So the goal here is to learn a, co a couple of things about yourself. Number one, which speed feels the most confident to you right now, like as of right now, four, six, eight, or 10? Everybody has a little bit different like tennis personality and uh, tempo or speed of swing that feels most solid and most comfortable, most confident to them. Because of what you described, Jay, like you might be most comfortable at a four, but as you play better and better opponents, it's gonna be tough for you to beat those strong opponents who start to have weapons. And the other thing you wanna be most kind of co cognizant of as you do this training drill is which speed is most consistent. Now it's it's temp it's like tempting or like it might seem obvious on the surface like oh well four is going to be the most consistent because it's the slowest. Well, not always. A lot of times when people are most let's say as an example, let's say Jay goes out and he discovers that he's most confident at six. That might be his most consistent speed. But if he goes up to eight out of ten, then all of a sudden stuff starts to fall down and he starts to make more mistakes. 10 out of 10, you're almost certainly not going to be most consistent. Like when you're hitting the ball as hard as possible, you're 100% not going to be your most consistent at, at 10 out of 10. But the goal here of the drill is to get the answers to these two questions. Where are you most comfortable right now? And where are you most consistent right now? And long term, over time, it's your goal to increase your standard number. So as of right now, Jay, maybe four is your best number. Well, if six months from now, you can increase that to a five, that would be a huge win for your game. And if six months after that, you can swing at a six out of 10 of your max effort and be super solid, confident, and consistent, that would be incredible for your tennis. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to hit every shot at a six, but just to have some wiggle room and some room to play in terms of your intensity and your swing speed, it would really help your game tremendously to be able to do that.